Good morning everybody. It is Wednesday morning and we have reached the last chapter in the book of Acts, chapter 28. So let's read chapter 28 together. Once we were safe on shore, we learned there were we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the flat fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Near the shore where they landed was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the land. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius' father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed with him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honours, and when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything we needed for the trip. It was three months after the shipwreck when we set sail on another ship that had wintered on the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin gods as its figurehead. The first stop was Circus, where we stayed for three days. From there we sailed to Reachum. A day later, a south wind began blowing, so the following day we sailed up to Pordoyon, where there we found some believers who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers and sisters in Rome had heard we were coming, and they came to meet us at the Forum of the Apanian Way. Others joined us at the Three Taverns. When Paul saw them, he was encouraged and thanked God. When we arrived in Rome, Paul was permitted to have his own private lodging, although he was guarded by a soldier. Three days after Paul's arrival, he called together the local Jewish leaders. He said to them, Brothers, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Roman government, even though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors. The Romans tried me and wanted to release me because they found no cause for the death sentence. But when the Jewish leaders protested the decision, I felt it necessary to appeal to Caesar, even though I had no desire to press charges against my own people. I ask you to come here today so we could get acquainted and so I could explain to you that I am bound with this chain because I believe that the hope of Israel, the Messiah, has already come. He replied, we have no letters from Judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here. But we want to hear what you believe. For the only thing that we know about this movement is that it was denounced everywhere. So set a time, so a time was set and on that day a large number of people came to Paul's lodging. He explained and testified about the kingdom of God and he tried to persuade them about Jesus from the scriptures. Using the law of Moses and the books of the prophets, he spoke to them from morning to evening. Some were persuaded by the things he said, but others did not believe. And after they had argued back and forth among themselves, they left with this final word from Paul. The Holy Spirit was right when he said about your ancestors through Isaiah the prophet. Go and say to this people, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear. They have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, their ears cannot hear, their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. So I want you to know that this salvation from God has also been offered to the Gentiles, and they will accept it. For the next two years, Paul lived in Rome at his own expense. He welcomed all who visited him boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ and no one tried to stop him. Amen. 
the end of the book of Acts, uh, where Paul is in Rome waiting to talk to Caesar, waiting for his trial in front of um, the leader of the country. Uh, and as he does so, Paul doesn't miss an opportunity. He takes every chance he can to talk about God. And there's a challenge, isn't it? Do we take every opportunity? Do we take every little thing that's given to us and use it for God's glory? Paul did something very practical for people. When he first, when you read the start of that chapter, he was healing those who were um, sick. He used the gifts that God had given him to God's glory. He used his ability to speak and to reason um, with those who were around him. He didn't say, oh, it's not my role, I'll not do that here, or I'm in chains, so why should I do that? No, he, he, he carried on regardless. How often do we neglect our gifts? How often do we not use what God has given to us for his glory and for his honour as an opportunity to show people God's love, for an opportunity to show people who God is? We do miss opportunities all the time, don't we? If we're honest. Maybe next time an opportunity comes along where you can either do something or say something which will show God's love um, or speak about what God has done. Maybe you remember the example of Paul and how even when he's under imprisonment, he continues to use those gifts, those talents. He continues to speak and preach. I pray that would challenge all of us um, each and every day to, to seek out those opportunities when we can talk about God, show God, let our actions speak. Whatever it is, whatever gift or whatever talent it is that God has given us, that we can use it for his glory and for his honour. I'm going to pray in a moment, um, but just to say at this stage, um, this is Wednesday, so I'm taking the next two days off. I'm going to take a little, little bit of break, so I'll not be doing any more readings um, this week. Uh, Saturday, I don't anyway. Sunday, 11 o'clock, we'll be back for our online service. Please, if you can, um, join us. Um, if it's later on the day, that's fine, or later on the week, that's okay, you can tune in. Uh, if there's anyone else you know who's not watching anything at all and they can access the internet, let them know about it. Um, we have the audio CDs as well. Um, if that would be useful, again, drop me a little message and let me know about it. Um, but then we're back again come Monday to Bible reading. And let's see what we start to read come Monday morning. But let's pause and let's pray right now. We've been asked by PCI to pray for those who are working um, in research, those who are looking at COVID-19, um, working in a way to try and treat it more effectively, looking at a way to try and create a vaccine for it as well. So let's pray for that this morning as we come together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this morning. Thank you again for your blessing upon us, for your provision. Lord, thank you that we've, we've had beds to sleep in overnight, we've had roofs over our heads. Thank you that this morning we have food, we have clothing. Lord, we have so much and we are so grateful. So thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon us in that physical sense. But Lord, thank you more importantly for the blessing of your word and your son, of your love. Lord, how that can change and transform everything. Thank you that even though we don't deserve it, you pour out your love onto us every day. And you don't stop loving us and you don't measure it, Lord, yet you pour it out, not holding back. And we thank you for that. Lord, thank you for the gifts and the talents that you have given to each of us, our abilities. Pray for those who've been given the ability uh, of research and understanding uh, Lord, as they work towards trying to treat COVID-19 and trying to create a vaccine, please give them wisdom. I will help them as they look to help others. And Lord, we pray that this work would be successful and that something would be found so that people will recover, that people can get a vaccination against it and keep themselves safe and well so that life can get back to whatever normal will be. Lord, just thank you. Thank you for your constant pre presence with us this week so far. Thank you that knowing that you will be with us the rest of this week. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And thank you, Lord, for we know that you're answering them right now. 
Just ask you to be with us, look after us and care for us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, uh, for joining with me. I do pray that you stay well and safe the rest of the week. Um, and I will see you all again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Till then, take care. God bless.